Hello everyone, it's me, Coffee Stitcher. It is the Sunday before Christmas, if you can believe that. Um, it's also, I believe today is the first day of Hanukkah, so happy Hanukkah to everyone out there who celebrates Hanukkah. My secret Santa got me a tiara, and I'm wearing it all the time now. It's a little off center. Uh, I won't leave it on all video, but I did at least want to show my tiara off. Um, so that was everybody's week. Good. Mine was good. We had a, like I said, we did Secret Santa at work and I got a tiara actually. I'm going to put the tiara back on. Um... So my week was good. Um, we've got Q and A. We've got haul. We've got an FFO. We've got a page finish. <laughs> we got a lot of things today. Uh, the uh, and we've got a little bit of um, discussion for next year. So at least in terms of magical stitches, because a couple of people, couple of people have asked. So one more sip of coffee. All right, let's do this. Okay, so diving into the Q&A, um, Shirley Miranaka um, asks, what keeps you doing floss tube? What keeps you motivated? She has several questions, so that's the first one. What keeps me mo doing floss tube? I enjoy it. Um, it's sort of my outlet to kind of perform and talk about myself, and I'm just narcissistic enough to do that. Um, but at least I'm aware of it. The, uh, but I enjoy doing it, and the stitching is what keeps me motivated to keep doing them. Um, that, and I like having the routine. Um, her next question, do you know of a way to make paper patterns into PDFs? Will scanning work? I would assume you can probably scan anything and make it into a PDF. Um, with the bigger patterns like Mirabilia's, I'm not quite sure how well that would work. But for your standard paper patterns, you should be able to do that with no trouble. Um, and she said a while back, you did five random things about you. Can you do it again? Um, I don't remember what the five things were that I said. <laughs> so, um, I apologize if these are any repeats. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, fun thing, five random things about me. I can lick my elbow. Um, and I feel like I did that last time, but it's my one, like, sort of party trick. Um, let's see, another random thing about myself, I prefer vegetables raw to cooked, um, because I don't like the way they taste after they're cooked a lot of the times. Now, some of them, like beans or things like that, fine, but carrots I prefer raw or only lightly cooked. Um, I don't like eating tomatoes, but I do like ketchup. I'll just go with some random food things. Um, I don't like watermelon, but I like watermelon flavored things. And what's one more random thing about me? Um, Oh, I wanted to be a marine biologist, but I'm terrified of water. <laughs> but I like the ocean. I like learning about it. I'm terrified of it. Why I, one of the many reasons why I wasn't a marine biologist. So there you go. Um, all right, Under the Willow asked about magical stitches, so we'll come back to that at the end of the video um, for those who aren't interested in magical stitches. Um, Brandy Mills, thank you. I just actually managed to see this somehow. Um, I do have a copy of the Hello Dolly LP, um, but I appreciate the offer and the thought. Um, Christy Martin also asked about, um, Magical Stitches that's coming. 
Uh, Jennifer Mannion asks, are you always cold? It seems like you always wrap up in a blanket. And the answer is yes, I'm always cold. Um, we keep the apartment fairly chilly, largely because I do like being curled up under blankets. So, yeah, it's nearly always cold. Um, Amanda M, great suggestion. Unfortunately, I had already done the mummy room, or else that might have been a really good option. Um, G Moss, that'll come, your magical stitches will come in a second. Uh, Joe Dempsey, yes, that is Agnes Moorhead behind me. Can sort of see her. Oh, sorry, apparently Duffy has fallen over. He's moving everybody. Um, yes, that is Agnes Moorhead right there. Um, so the, I, I have her there because I'm, I believe it's a German tradition of the kitchen witch, but since I don't really have a good space in a kitchen to hang a witch, uh, she hangs and she's my stitching witch. Let's see, Kay Richard, um, I believe you were asking somebody else because I don't have a stain, a dragonfly cross stitch, but um, I hope whoever does got the stain out. But it is not me. Um, and why? No, there should be more questions, than, or comments than this, but it's not wanting to load. Ah, uh, I hate you computer things. Um, let's see, we'll pull up YouTube and pull up my most recent video on my tablet. Where is the YouTube app? There it is. Ah, the washer just cut off. Do do do. Okay, actually, I guess that was it. Okay, so that's the end of the Q and A. Um, like I said, I do apologize for those wanting to know about magical stitches. We will dive into that at the end. All right, so this week's haul. Um, was all right so i got my usual um Krynix from uh from good old three owl threads and here they are i don't actually know what names they are but here they are it's a very nice uh christmas palette this one i'm pretty sure is confetti gold but don't quote me on that i may be wrong but it's a nice little christmas palette this time. And I don't know if she did that on purpose or not, but I like it. So I've got 9032, uh, 009 HL, which is high luster, so it's going to be emerald, I'm pretty sure. 24 HL, which I think is magenta high luster. Um, and then this one is 5011. And then this month's Fabric of the Month came from Under the Sea Fabrics. This is called Icicle. And I got it on in a Joblin. So here it is. It's a nice light blue. It's a little got a little more of a purple cast in person to it than it does here. But it's a nice light blue. And then, um, okay, so for next year's Stitching Book Club, my copy of The Three Musketeers came in. Um, I ordered the Lawrence Ellsworth 
uh, translation. It's a newer translation that was very highly marked. But my God, this book is huge. Look at that. So I'm looking forward to reading it, but um, yeah, it's gonna be a long book. And then I also ordered the two Veronica and Ginger books. So I ordered The Magic of Christmas, which fellow puffs who were wanting to Puffs. Um, fellow puffs who were wanting to see this is your time for the flip throughs. Um, so I got ordered The Magic of Christmas. Um, and unfortunately there's not going to be an easy way to do, well this one I can do a flip through and not show you. But it's got all sorts of really cool patterns. Like there's this one that's a toy shop. And some of you have probably seen these already, and so I apologize, but, um, and most of them have these little extra, like, little postcardy things that are supposed to be used as an advent. Um, I just have to figure out if I do the design separately, um, if I'm gonna do it like this one here, this wreath. I actually think I would leave this part out so it's just open. Um but on ones like, say, and I have no plans on starting any of these soon, like this one, actually this one probably also just be left open without it. Um, what's a good one that's got? Oh, there we go. Like this one, I would probably just leave the numbers out. But it's got all sorts of really pretty designs and of course reds and greens and whites. Um, and then, I also ordered Fables and Fairy Tales, which is gorgeous. Oh my god. Um, this one was a little harder to track down. I had to order it from Nancy's Notions. Um, but I'm really glad I did. Because um, these are just absolutely beautiful. And surprisingly, there's no blended threads in it. Um, so there's this one. It's the, the Toad and Ox. Um... The City Mouse and the Country Mouse. Um, some of the actual fairy tale ones. The Beauty and the Beast is gorgeous. Um, she unfortunately did not do Wizard of Oz. She did Alice in Wonderland instead, but I'll get over it. This real pretty princess one that's Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, and the Snow Queen. Um, but they're just all so pretty. Um, so there's definitely going to be at least one or two of these that get done next year by me. Um, but I really like the patterns and I, I like how they're laid out. So, yeah. Ah. All right. So that's the haul. That's the Q&A. All right. So let's discuss uh, homework for this week, what I worked on. Um, oh, I'll show you the FFO too. Um, let's see, hop over to Facebook so that I can get my... Oh, what was what? Mm. Okay, so here's the FFO. Um, G's project is back. I was able to pick it up. She's present. So here it is. Um, they were able to frame it without a frame, so it's like a canvas, which, there's the back. I really like how it turned out. So, there it is, all nice and finished. Um, so, and he absolutely loves it, so, which is the important part, of course. Uh, but I'm very happy, he's very happy, and since I know they can do this at Stitch Niche now, well... We may have a couple of other things get finally finished. And I'm actually thinking those Soda Stitch Fairy Tale ones would look really good this way. All right. So for this week's homework, um, we. This was all set before the battle. So the first thing that we had was um, friendly face or sibling rivalry, where we had to work on something we're always excited to see come out 
or one that we don't really like working on, but we work on it because we want it finished so we can work on other things. In my case, it was a combination of the two. Um, because it's a pattern I really do love working on. Um, but it's been a bit of a frustration, and I have exciting news. So it was Paradise Lost. Um, you may have seen already. But... We have a page finish, and the damn cloud is done. Four and a half years. It's finally done. So, there's the cloud. Um, the angel looks less like a stain. Especially in person. Um, but I've got a page finish. And I am so glad. It's been a long time coming. So, here we go. Right. So the next time I work on it, I'll actually, because it I started in the middle, so I'll actually be starting on page one, which means this corner here. So I'm officially a fifth of the way through it, um, and I think it's really probably going to start moving along quickly now, um, which is a good thing, because it needs to. It has needed to for a while. Ah. All right. Um, so that was 483 stitches finished the cloud, and then probably about another 200 did the, the rest of it. So the next thing we were supposed to work on was something witty, because we're looking for the lost diet. We were looking for the lost diadem of Ravenclaw, and Ravenclaw's motto was um, "Wit beyond measure is gr man's greatest treasure." So I worked on Jenny Bean Halloween. Um, got exactly 200 stitches left to finish the front portion of the house. And I did that because I like the little verse. So here it is. This is on Desert Storm, I think. Or maybe it's Desert Sand. Or maybe it's Sandstorm. I have it here. Desert Stone. I wasn't even remotely close. Desert Stone um, from Witchelt. So, and it's using, um, it was charred with this special set of, of general arts that I didn't have, so I'm using the substitution. Um, but there we go. There's the front part of the house. So the next time I work on it, hopefully I'll finish the house. And then this is another one of those that once you get the big center part done, I think the rest of it's going to kind of go quickly. All right, so then we had an option for Professor McGonagall or Headmaster Snape based off of a coin toss. I was either doing the Weasley Twins for Professor McGonagall or Nevermore for Professor Snape. And Professor Snape was who we got in Hufflepuff. So I did 373 stitches. And that finished out the alphabet on Nevermore. This is on Chai T from uh, Witchelt. So there it is. I used Royal Purple from General Arts for the alphabet. I'm going to use the same for the numbers. I don't know about the yes, no, or goodbye yet. I haven't decided. I haven't gotten that far yet. There we go. It's coming along really well. And I'm really enjoying doing color conversions. So I will probably, because I've got a handful of Prairie Schooler designs. Um, and I think now that I've done it with this one... I'm very likely going to do it with all of them from now on. All right, so the next one was 200 stitches in the jewel tone color that you would wear in your crown. Originally, I was going to do Universal Monsters, but I really didn't feel up to doing all that much black. So I pulled out Pride and Prejudice, and I also worked on Pride and Prejudice a little yesterday. So I finished the border in part one. So I've just got a little left in part two. And I did the greens for um, Peridot's and Emeralds. So there's the border in part one done. Yay! So I've got the little hearts on this side and there's a little bit under the, the row of leaves. And then part one will be done. Um, and this is on Heaven's Fury from Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, this one's going to be worked on next week for sure. Uh, well, I say that. We'll get to that when we come to this week's homework. But it'll be in next week's. 
And then the last one I ended up penalty stitching on. It was um, the last Horcrux stitch 200 on a snake or a woman. So I pulled out Nutcracker from Soda Stitch. And I did the outer, or the inner border. So the inner border is all done. So now I'm ready to start working on the other parts, which is exciting. So this is on uh, Gold Opal Christmas in Williamsburg from Under the Sea Fabrics. So there it is. Um, I love this fabric. So that took care of this week's homework. Um, and then, let's see, what else? Then um, Sunday last week was my first Stitch Along Sunday. Oh, I didn't pick what today's going to be. Well, we'll find out when I spin the wheel, because I don't know what it's going to be. Um, but I got two parts done on Corner of the Earth. So I'm almost halfway done. And I actually really probably could have kept going, but I was, I did two parts and I was ready to move on. So. Hmm. so there we go. And this is on Autumn from Under the Sea Fabrics. So that was my first one for Sal Sunday. And then Friday and Saturday a little bit, I worked on... Um, with the needle. This is the original with the needle. Um, it's on Rosemerta from Under the Sea Fabrics. And I got the frame done on this middle part. And I got the corn done and I got some grass done. So there we go. So it's all ready for the next time I work on it. Um, okay, so that takes us to next week's homework. Now, next week's homework's a little different because we've got, um, we have to do 500 stitches. It can be, we've got five prompts. We can do, as long as we do 500, we get our credit. Um, and then for each hundred we do, so if we do one, if we do all five prompts and we do more than the 500 stitches, then we get a bonus point for every hundred stitches after that. Because it's holiday week, so who knows what we're going to get done. Um, so the first one was for Dumbledore and Snape's Many Layers. Um, work on the whip, your whip with the most colors, which in my case is the Leslie Tear Wizard of Oz. So, there we go. Ta-da! So that's where I'm at. Um, so we'll work on that one tomorrow. Because I usually work on them in the order of the assignments. Um, unless a project's being used for more than one. We're supposed to work on a whip with a flower in honor of Lily. So I will be working on Pride and Prejudice again because there are flowers in it. So I'm planning to finish out part one with that this week. All right, then Resurrection Stone, whip that reminds you of someone you've lost. Now for this one, I had to get a little creative because I don't tend to do memorial pieces. So I'm going to work on the Weasley twins in honor of our unfortunate loss of Fred in the battle. Although, I'm not going to lie, part of me just refuses to accept that that was what happened. He was just unconscious, he came to, everything is good and well. Um, then, we're supposed to do um, at least 100 white stitches. Um, 
so that one I'm not entirely sure. I may end up pulling out Words to Live By and trying to work a little on its board, one of the border frames, because that's done in white. But it's going to depend on if I can actually even get to where one of the border parts is. Um, I'm not that far in it. So I'm kind of hoping maybe Words to Live By will be what ends up on, and it may, I may just go ahead and decide Words to Live By is what's going to be on the thing today. So that way I can get sort of maybe to the border. That way I can get points in for that one. And then the last one is a project I love. And since Wizard is already being used for most colors, I'm going to work on quilts this week from Long Dog. Um, and I forget what fabric this is on. I'm pretty sure it's an under the sea fabrics though. But I don't know if I kept the color. I'm really bad about misplacing the fabric tag. Oh, it is. It's tiramisu from under the sea fabrics. So there you go. So that is this week's homework. All right, so um, I'm gonna take a sip of coffee. Okay, so Magical Stitches. First off, it is a Facebook group. You can find it under um, Magic, er, School of Magical Stitches and Literature. That's its official name. It largely gets squished down to just Magical Stitches. Um, this year's theme is, uh, Disney. We're reading two different book series. We're alternating each month, so we're starting with the seven, there's seven books in the first series, and that is the Kingdom Keeper series, um, by Ridley Pearson, and I think Dave Barry also contributed, um, or may have just given him the idea. And we'll read that January in the odd numbered months and December because there's seven. And then we're going to read in the even numbered months, the Disney villains series. And I, they're, um, primarily the books told from the villains point of view. Um, they're fairly solidly middle school, young adult novels. So they won't take you very long to read. Um, if this says anything, the audiobook for, um, most of the Kingdom Keepers books run around six hours. Um, they also aren't as plot heavy as the Harry Potter books. Um, instead of being sorted into houses, we're being sorted into resorts. So I'm in charge of the Wilderness Resort with Lorna. Um, there's also Beach Club, Grand Floridian, and Boardwalk. There will be weekly assignments, much like there were for Harry Potter, um, weekly and monthly extra credit assignments that are in the main group, just like they are this year. <coughs> uh, bless me. So there'll be, and those will be based off of what we're reading in the books themselves. There will be points. I don't know exactly what the points will go to but the points will go, but it's not going to be the competition. So we don't have the house cup this year. Inside your resorts, however, there are, are where the yearly challenges are. There's several big ones. The cool one, the coolest one I think is the read it or stitch it where you have the option to either, it's got three different sections, um, with multiple prompts inside them. And you either have to stitch on something that relates to the prompt um, or read something that stitch relates to it. The year long ones, um, are ongoing. You can do as many or as few of those as you want. Then we're doing what's called a, uh, what, what we're kind of calling the build the park challenge. And it's inside each group where you're, and the idea is in the Kingdom Keepers books, um, the Disney villains are trying to take over the parks. So we're rescuing those parts. Well, the first thing you have to do is stop at tickets. And then you go into transportation and you can take the ferry or the monorail. And then you can start building the park as it is. 
there's a set, no there's a total number of stitches required to unlock that area. When the group does reach that number, um, then we get the next part. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, there is a minimum number of stitches required for participation, but you can stitch more if you like. Um, and I, it's usually fairly low. I think the first one up is like 125 stitches. So you do 125 stitches on anything you want. No restrictions, just 125 stitches. And then once we've unlocked that item, you get a badge. Um, and it's going to be a digital badge. It's not going to be an actual badge. But it'll still be there, and it'll still be cool. Um, and so the goal is to see, unofficially see, who can get the parks built fast enough. Um, which, it's gonna be Wilderness Lodge, because we're awesome, y'all. Um. No, oh, that's strange. There we go. Um, I was gonna make sure that I got everyone's questions answered. But my computer decided to go to sleep. Um. You are, of course, welcome to ask any and all questions. We'll do our best to answer them or get answers for you. Um, let's see. Um, so there's the group ones and then there'll be the regular homework assignments. Um, you're welcome to participate in as much or as little. Um, once you get your resort placement, go to your group to request it. Don't just randomly request the groups, though, um, because we're not, we're not letting in people outside. Not because we don't want to welcome people, but just to make it simpler for us. Um, so I think that should just about answer everybody's questions. Um, if you have any further ones, definitely don't be afraid to drop them down below, and I will do everything I can to try and answer them for you. Um, otherwise, I think that's kind of it for me this week. So, for those celebrating Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah. For those celebrating Christmas, Merry Christmas. For those celebrating neither, have a great week, and I will see you next time. Bye.